Okay, so let's go over this problem. So I gave you this. These are the masses and volumes for different objects of the same material. And we want to find the density. So I know that the density is mass divided by volume. And that's the Greek letter rho. Uh, we like to use that instead of D because it's cool. So I, I'm going to be changing the mass and the volume. Um, and I want to know the relationship between that. And so if I solve this for mass, I get mass equals density times volume. Now if you think about that as a normal equation y equals mx plus b, then the mass is the y-coordinate, the volume is the x-coordinate, and the density is the slope, and there's no intercept. So I'm going to plot y on the vertical axis, volume on the horizontal axis, and I'm going to find the slope. Okay, so here are my values. I've already, so I, I have a piece of graph paper. I've made x and y axis. I've already labeled them. Now, when I do this, I know that I have masses from 100, like right here, from 100 to 280 grams. And the units aren't super important right now. So I, go, I need to go from 100 to 280. I'd like to take at least half the graph. Okay. So if I do every two squares is 10 grams, then I can go from 100 to 280. I don't have to start at zero. Okay. I don't have to do that. And the same thing for the volume. I actually picked started right here at 50 and went 10. I didn't go halfway, so I could go bigger, but I, I'm not, I'm not going to do it again. Okay, so now I'm going to take this first data point. The first data point is 151. So I'm going to say 100 right here, and 51 is right there. So there's my data point. Next one, 152, somewhere right there, and 57. So 50, that's a halfway point. 152 and 57, so be about right there. Okay, now my next one's 222, it's way up here, and 80. Let's use this. 222 and 80. Wait, 80 is right there. Didn't that be perfect? Um, 261. And 94, so it's right there on the middle, a little bit below it. So it's about right there. And then 280 and 104. There. Now I have one, two, three, four, five data points. They're not in a perfect line, so I don't want to connect a line. I want to do a best fit line. So I'm going to kind of take my straight edge and approximate something that's close to all the data points. It doesn't have to touch any of them. Okay, It could touch them, it doesn't matter. And this is just, you're going to have to just guess. There. Now I want to find the slope of this line. So I'm going to pick a point down here. I'm going to pick that point. I'm going to pick a point up here, anywhere. I'm looking for ones where it crosses because it's a little bit easier. Okay, so this point is going to be the x-coordinate is 50, the y-coordinate is 110, and I left off the units. Up here, the x-coordinate is, let's see, that's 290, 290, that's 290 for the y, 105, this is 105, 290. Okay, so now I can get the slope. It's going to be the change in the y coordinate, so it's 290 grams minus 50 grams. All of that over the change in x, which is going to be 105 cubic centimeters minus, uh, wait, I'm sorry, this is 110 minus 50. And I don't have my calculator with me. Actually, and my phone's being used right now. So I think this is somewhere around uh, two or three point something. Let's say 3.0 grams per cubic centimeters. And that's the slope. Okay, let's see, that's, this is check. That's going to be around 300 divided by 50. No, it's 200 divided by 50. Okay, yeah, so it's close. 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 I just guessed. 
Okay, so that is the slope and that's the, the answer to the question. Now, really quickly, what if I had plotted volume versus mass? If I plotted volume versus mass, this equation would be volume equals one over the density times the mass. So the slope would be one over the density. So once I get the slope, I'd have to take one over the slope to get the density. And that's how I do this problem.